What's going on, Bunch of Crush Army? It's your boy back again, the one and only Keith Allen, man, to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips that's going to help you become a better Fortnite player. You know, with the competitive season underway, players have been training to improve their technical skills so that they can take home the win. However, there is more to just being a good Fortnite player, especially one that can perform well in a team. You know, this season, the FNCS is using the trios model like we've seen in the past few years, right? Seeing as this is the go-to competition for anybody wanting to make it big, you're going to need an understanding of the different roles each member of the trio has to have. Like, you know, any other game, whether it be real life or online, you know, roles are assigned to make a team more organized. And if you've been grinding on solo, you might have a basic understanding of roles without even realizing it. This is because you're performing all the actions such as building and planning a route and just getting kills all on your own. So the team structure, however, separates each of these functions and really divides them amongst your teammates. So there are four widely accepted roles within Fortnite competitive, and they are the IGL, the Tarper, the Fragger, and the Support. These roles require each player to understand their weaknesses and their strengths. It also requires them to understand the purpose of, you know, within a team structure. Fortnite has a variety of different roles that really utilize different aspects of the game. And so if you plan on playing professionally, guys, and taking on some, you know, of the more intense trio events, understanding each individual role, it's going to help you just have a better team that can stand up to any challenge. Let me ask you this, man. Do you feel like you could be playing better in your Fortnite games? Well, the truth is, you're probably right. Everybody has the potential to play better, including you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You might just need a little push in the right direction, which you can get from our team of world-class pro coaches. They're going to play with you in your games, man. They're going to guide you past all your mistakes so you can unlock your hidden Fortnite potential. All you need to do is click the link in the description to reach ProGuides.com. All right, guys, so the first role that we want to go over is often considered the most important. The IGL, or in-game leader, is the brains behind the operation. They are the ones who dictate the strategy the team is going to implement, what rotation your team is going to use, and in some cases, even assign roles. This is why the IGL is usually the most experienced member of the trio. They understand what is expected from each role, and they know how to bring a team together during a high-stress situation. This means crystal clear communication. Okay, so if you're interested in becoming an IGL for your team, it's really best to start off by understanding every aspect of the game. This means keeping up with the meta and VOD reviewing other pro players in order to learn new strategies for organizing your team. You know, an IGL needs to constantly be learning the game as it changes so they can provide the best possible leadership. You know, in Season 8, there are plenty of different ways to rotate, and with such a platter of options, the IGL is in charge of finding the best method to get where you need to be. One example of a good IGL is Arkham. His ability to stay calm during the heat of battle and his experience in tournaments gives him the necessary skills to make smart decisions during a match. An IGL must also have the confidence of their own teammates. So if your teammates lack trust in you, then they're more than likely going to run off of their own. This is why it's really good, guys, to really do some team building exercises so that you can all be on the same page. You know, when you make a decision, your team needs to feel like you know what you're doing, but also that you're willing to listen to your teammates when they give input. The worst kind of a leader, guys, is one that refuses to hear any suggestions and they just think they know all the answers. The Tarper is one of the more crucial roles, especially in the end game, man. In a regular game of Fortnite, the game can be over before the Storm Circle has reached its smallest size. However, with the skill levels being heavily increased during tournaments and competitive modes, the game can last longer to the point where the Storm Circle will begin to move and players will constantly be build fighting while trying to stay out of the storm. This is where the Tarper must show off his skills. The Tarper must be good at building more specifically editing and managing resources like when the final phase of the storm close in they need to be aware of which direction the circle is headed and pave a way for their team to keep up with the rest of the players this also means that the tarper must focus on gathering enough materials for the end game since this is when the skill will be most necessary if you want to excel in this role you must know the different types of tunneling techniques and when to use them for example a standard tarping technique can consist of a straight forward tunnel with two walls a floor and a ceiling. However, there are plenty of additional builds such as ramps and cones that can be used to really diversify the tunnels, provide cover, and save on materials. So you also don't always need to go in a straight line. A zigzag tarp can not only change your direction, but it can also make you less predictable. So considering a trio can only have three players, the IGL will often take the role of a tarper in these situations. It's also helpful if your support knows how to tarp as well. But, you know, since they need to act as extra help for both Fragger and Tarper, the former is the more attractive setup. Okay, now here's a hot tip for you guys, all right? Like, if you plan on being a Tarper, then consider practicing on a keyboard rather than a controller. Why? Good question. 
Well, the keyboard with its custom key bindings and abundance of buttons can give you guys the physical advantage that you need to become the best harper. Not only will the buttons be more within reach, but aim speed will also allow you to tunnel faster. So to see a good tarper in action, consider watching pro players such as Mr. Savage or Taysun. If you're amazing at getting eliminations and have good mechanical skills as well as accuracy, you might consider the role of a fragger. But I will say this, despite the name being a fragger, it's just more than just getting into every single fight. Like you also have to play smart and use those skills strategically. For starters, like you're also gonna be the most active player looking to get kills, but you also wanna make sure that you don't just stray too far from the group. This means if a fight is too far away and all you have is a shotgun you need to make sure that you don't get into a fight where you know your trio must also understand that getting the fragger fully equipped takes the top most priority but you know after all like they are the most skilled at getting kills and so if you happen to come across an epic pump you must be willing to give it up so that the fragger can work their magic a properly equipped fragger will take you a long long way in a late game, a fragger must become even more aware and accurate than ever before. While your other team members are focused on creating builds, a fragger needs to stay vigilant, watchful, and just look for openings where they can score a kill. Although kills are just important for the overall score, they are also essential in the late game when you can no longer rely on chests for ammunition or structures for building materials. Being able to get a kill during this time can provide your team with a good refresh on their equipment. Odds are, if you're in the late game, your opponents have also been stocking up on all the useful goodies. A fragger should also consider practicing their peace control skills. Like This is going to allow them to get the kill much quicker, and this is going to make you a much more aggressive player and just one capable of scoring valuable points for your team. So the support role is essentially a jack of all trades, right? But I will say this, like before you dismiss this role, like there are actually some specifics a player should know that are essential for playing support. Yes, you aren't just the water boy for your team. <laughs> You are the backbone that prevents the team from falling apart. For starters, a support player must know their teammates well enough, you know, including their habits during a match. This is going to allow them to get a feel for the type of plays their teammates are accustomed to do and really being able to anticipate their movements during times when communication might not be available. It's also highly recommended that they learn how to keep a really good watchful eye on their team at all times and have the decision making skills to really help out whenever they're needed the most. You know, during a match, it's recommended that a support player stays somewhere in between the fragger and the tarper. This is gonna allow them to quickly reach the players when they are in need of assistance. And it also connects the team. So, you know, you're working as a unit rather than just accidentally going solo. After all, like, you know, when you're going after a kill, it's easy to get caught up in the moment and just stop paying attention to where your teammates are. And during a competitive map, soloing can leave your team divided and easily picked off. The support role exists to make sure that this does not happen. In the current season of Fortnite, there are plenty of items that can be useful for any support player. The Chili Chug can be great for speeding up your team and just really provide a quick heal. This would allow the fragger to move around quicker, giving them the advantage in a fight, as well as just allowing the harper to really move through the tunnels quicker. The harpoon can also help damage an opponent, but also move them closer towards your team. And this can be a great opportunity to get a kill and refresh your equipment. So consider dedicating your inventory to caring what will benefit your teammates the most. All right, guys, so now that you've gotten an overview of the different roles, it's important to understand how you're going to be playing as a team and what your expectations should definitely be. Despite each player being assigned a separate role, don't think that you're not going to be asked to perform the task of other roles at any given time. Time, right like you never know what's gonna happen in a game there are going to be times when the tarper is going to run out of building materials <laughs> just because this happens doesn't mean that the game is over if you're in the same proximity you may need to do some building to cover for your tarper while they regain more materials same goes for the fragger whose job is to actively seek the best opportunities to go in for the kill during a fight you might need to step in and play aggressively along with them to really counter the enemy team think of your role not as just only as a skill that you bring to the table but rather as a select skill that you're going to focus more on during the match. All right, so the final tip that we have for you guys, whew, man, this is so important and this goes out to every member on your team. During a match, communication is the key to everything. Even if you understand your roles, well, having flawed communication can be your downfall. Stay focused on the match and try using comms only when you need to. You must be able to hear whatever your IGL is telling you to do, but also important nuggets of information from your teammates. You know, in the late game, communication might be a bit more hectic than the early game. 
Here, you know, tensions are just running high and blood is pumping. It becomes a very close quarters game and you might be hearing multiple different directions at once. So the key to success is just staying calm. Like if you look at some of the gameplay from pro players and their teams, you're going to find that many of them are good at keeping their cool. You're also going to notice that you can hear their teams communicating with each other without constantly screaming into the mic. This is the sign of good coordination amongst teammates. All right, Butcher Krasami, that's all that we got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys liked, make sure to subscribe to the channel and spread the word about what we got going on in this channel. We got some more great stuff coming out. I'm proud of you guys. As always, I believe in you guys. Never give up on your dreams. Never give up on the desires that is in your heart, man. I love you guys. Keep going. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.